Mac Haddo, Senior Fellow in Public Policy with the American Kratom Association. With the American Kratom Association. And I'm joined by former state, New York State Senator David Carlucci to give you an update on the legislative activities that we're engaged in for the state Kratom Consumer Protection Acts. Uh, as you know, there's a lot going on because the 2022 legislative sessions uh, are all fully uh, in, in, uh, in working on various legislative activities, including in some key states, the Kratom Consumer Protection Act. I wanted to, to give everyone a, a brief overview of how we process information and address the, the hot spots around the country because while we're promoting the Kratom Consumer Protection Act in specific states and in many of those states with paid lobbyists that are familiar with the local uh, leaders and how these legislative processes that are uh, nuanced to the state itself, uh, we rely upon that expertise and the connections that those lobbying teams bring. Uh, we are restrained only by our financial resources to uh, tax states where we think we have opportunities. There are some states out there that we hope will follow on in the future, and we're going to get to those as our resources allow. But the second problem that we have is that we're seeing a growing number of, of potential bans that could be enacted. Uh, we saw one filed yesterday, which is a carryover bill in New Jersey, where Representative Dancer has filed his, his annual Kratom ban bill. Uh, and he's hoping that he can continue to wear down the opponents to the ban uh, and get his bill enacted. And, and, and he's trying to piggyback on some of the anti-Kratom activists that are active uh, and becoming more active in these in social media and other spaces to motivate uh, lawmakers to do whatever uh, the prevailing trends push to. Uh, we saw a ban in the state of Washington that was filed by Senator Honeyford. And after a discussion with Sen Senator Honeyford, and this is one that that we really work hard on whenever, whenever we see a ban pop up, uh, we talk to these uh, individuals, these legislators who propose the bans. And in most cases, they understand, see the light, and then they, they convert to supporting a regulatory scheme that protects consumers and still allows freedom of access for people that can use Kratom for their health and well being. Senator Honeyford heard our message. Uh, he filed a Kratom Consumer Protection Act, and the Health Committee chairman has now referred that for interim discussion over the summer so that next January, when they convene, that we'll have a full hearing and we'll be able to promote the Kratom Consumer Protection Act. We see the same thing happening in some regards in Kentucky, where we had a banned bill filed, and uh, we've been working with that sponsor, and we think that there may be an opportunity for cooperation there. Uh, these things happen. Uh, we see, see things happen in various states, for example. Arizona is, an is one prime example of what can happen. When the KCPA was passed in Arizona in 2019, there was a lack of enforcement based on a commitment from the Department of Health that they needed a year in order to develop the regulatory scheme. At the conclusion of that first year, they determined that the bill was adequate. They really didn't need to do anything. But without a regulatory scheme, some of the local counties in Arizona have now looked at uh, uh, actually imposing bans on Kratom in their local jurisdictions, much like you see in Mississippi, which is a hotbed of activity at the local level. Uh, and we needed to nip that in the bud because Arizona is a very strong home rule state which means that local jurisdictions have substantial powers to fill any gaps in uh, regulations that the state doesn't address or prohibit them to do. So the, the Arizona amendment tightens down the ability of a local jurisdiction to bypass the Creative Consumer Protection Act by enacting a local ban. And that's why that legislation is important. But it illustrates how this is a dynamic process that we go through. And our what we do on a daily basis is monitor every single regulatory and statutory action that happens in the states. We have sophisticated software programs that identify. We appreciate it when people tell us about the, uh, the bans that are being proposed in local jurisdictions, because typically these software programs don't scrape to that level at the local level. So the eyes and ears of our advocacy organizations are critical for us to know about that. But you can be reassured that at the state level, we know as soon as they happen, we appreciate being alerted there too, but we're not ignoring anyone. And this gets to the most critical and, and, and I think an important issue for everyone to understand. Sometimes the fact that we're not communicating the up-to-date uh, information about these things is interpreted by some in our community as simply not knowing or ignoring it. That is not the case. 
One of the biggest problems that we confront today is that we have a very strong and growing anti-Kratom advocacy community that has tapped into all of our communication channels. So that when we alert our, our advocacy channel to the fact that we have a, a legislator who is helping us and we identify that legislator with the specific legislation, they become attack targets for the anti-Kratom forces and it complicates our ability to get the legislation perfected and filed and moving through the legislative process. So delays that you may observe in our reporting to the advocacy community are by design to protect ourselves so that we can be more effective in the long run. I know that engenders some frustration because many in our advocacy community want desperately to know in real time to be able to immediately start working on this. Most of the time, we are far better off to target our communications when there's specific legislation. There are failures in that process and they do happen. Uh, we had a situation that occurred in Mississippi because you have an anti-Kratom advocate who happens to be the chairman of the committee that the bill, the, his ban bill was, uh, was actually filed in and referred to. And he had complete control over the agenda and without a public hearing, without an announcement that it was gonna be done, he rammed his bill through the committee uh, in order to get it onto the floor. And then without calendaring it on the floor, at the last minute, at the end of the day, raised the, the bill and rammed it through the Mississippi House. Those things happen, they are the anomaly. They, they require a certain confluence of events that are not typically seen in legislatures, but they are failures. And we, we apologize to any advocate that's, that's upset with us that we didn't trigger an alert in order to stop this. And it was only because of the nefarious activities of an anti-Kratom uh, advocate in the legislature that had the unique position to do what uh, Representative Yancey did. Uh, we are active now in the Senate, we're working hard and we hope people will join in and they are right now in very valuable communications that are going through. So these are, these are very technical issues that sometimes don't rationally uh, convey to our advocates in terms of the frustration you feel at wanting to do something and not being able to get it done because the, the AK appears to be not communicating very well. We are doing our best and we, are, we think that we've been, our, our, our model has worked time and time again. So Senator, Senator Carlucci is gonna talk about some of the things that we've done where we've seen successes with our efforts. So I'll turn it to him for a few moments and then we'll do some concluding remarks. Yeah, thank you, Mac. And it's an honor to be on with you today and um, working with you in all of these states. Um, uh, what I find is sometimes the biggest critic of Kratom could turn into our biggest ally. Because as all of you know, the first thing that happens with Kratom is people say, what, what are you talking about? And we have to educate them. And so that is, that is so important. And we find that many times lawmakers, uh, they hear information, they're concerned, they say something's gotta be done, they haven't really thought it through, and they say, let's ban it, let's schedule it. Because that's the easy answer, you know, just say no. Uh, it's a lazy form of policy, but it's one that's prevalent, unfortunately, in the United States. And when we can talk to those lawmakers and say, hey, look, we, we agree with your concern. And right now there is no regulation in your state, um, but banning it is not the answer. And that's why the KCPA is so important. So we've had tremendous success and we've been able to, we were recently in Ohio where we had a great hearing um, and we were able to then see just yesterday uh, Ohio passed the, um, the KCPA out of the House. Uh, so we're really excited about that and now have to focus on the Senate to put that across the finish line. And we're, we're very confident that, we, that that'll happen. So there's momentum happening in a multitude of states, um, as well as Wisconsin, which is a, currently a banned state. And we were at a hearing in Wisconsin and we were able to really address the fact that, look, right now you're criminalizing people in your state. And we had some really great advocates, um, regular people work, work hard. We had one lady that's a nurse in a correctional facility um, that she had to state on the record about how she has to travel out of state uh, to use Kratom and something that's helped her be so productive and help so many other people. Um, so we see when we can get the facts and we can get the information, but what's important is that we, we strategize on it and we use it strategically. Um, I believe our greatest resource is the advocates for access to Kratom. Uh, we know how passionate all of us are because we've seen what can be done and how this has turned people's lives around. We know also how it can be dangerous that if it's not regulated and regulators just turn the other way, 
that adulterated kratom can harm people. And that's why we are so uh, passionate about this, like all of you, and we want to use that energy and use it strategically. So I know I, you know, I sound like a broken record. I, I say it all the time as a former state lawmaker. Some of the most powerful uh, times are when we have real people talking to legislators and explaining their stories. And that's why I say the best thing that can be done is start to have those conversations. Don't wait till you hear about a ban in your state. A approach your state lawmaker, your state senator, your state representative. Have a conversation with them. Uh, they probably know nothing about Kratom. And once you start educating them about it, that helps us tremendously. Because when Representative Yancey and other lawmakers like that get to get on their high horse and talk about all the problems with Kratom, and you're a lawmaker and you have no history with Kratom, you have no education on it, you're susceptible to their confidence and, and, and their, their motive. Um, so that's why it, it, we have to work together succinctly on this and being proactive um, with your local state legislator is a very important thing. And if you have a productive conversation and you find that, hey, this might be someone that would carry the KCPA and help us, that's uh, an opportunity for us to then move in and work with them. Uh, we've got great momentum in uh, New York. Uh, bills have been filed in the Assembly and in the Senate. Uh, we're very close in, in New Jersey. We've had conversations um, with a state representative that is very interested in putting in the KCPA. Of course, we had the bill filed recently by uh, Representative Dancer, who has done this um, almost every year for the past few years, filed the ban bill. And what's important, I think, in states like New Jersey and New York particularly, but all over the country, is when we talk about a ban, we, we try to educate people about what a ban really means. And a ban, um, in most cases, like what we see in Mississippi and what has been filed in Kentucky, these are scheduling uh, Kratom as a Schedule One substance, meaning putting it in the same category as heroin, which is totally ridiculous. We all know that. And that's why we want to make sure that people understand what does this mean, scheduling. Uh, in a place like Kentucky, if you have a prior drug, drug offense, and if this is something that actually did become law, you're looking at mandatory minimums, uh, a sentencing, absolutely absurd. So it's important that we, we meet all these angles, but um, we're excited with the momentum that we're seeing. I know Mac you know, talked about Florida, um, how we have um, uh, progress that's happening in Florida. Um, in Hawaii, we're excited about the progress there. So it's like, um, it's like that whack-a-mole. You know, we have um, great things that are happening where we find uh, champions and, and people um, like yourself that are excited to get involved and educate lawmakers and, and push forth the regulation of Kratom, uh, the safe access to unadulterated Kratom. Um, and then you have lawmakers that pop up and introduce ban bills. And when we get a hold of them and we talk to them, uh, most of the time, you know, they only have half of the picture. And that's where it's, it's been really exciting to turn that light on for the lawmakers and allow them to really understand what Kratom is, what it isn't, and how we sympathize with them and agree with them that Kratom needs to be regulated, but it needs to be done in the safe way to make sure people have access to Kratom. So um, with that, I'll turn it back over to Mac. Um, and, and I'm just really excited to work with all of you. And I know 2022 is going to be a banner year for us where we see the KCPA passing in states and we beat back these ban bills. Uh, thank you, David. And, and let me just conclude by with two points. Uh, the first is that Delegate Yancey in Mississippi is not an evil person. He's a person who believes sincerely that Kratom is harmful. He needs to be educated. What he doesn't need are attacks and threats that are being made against him by some of our vociferous advocates. Uh, we've seen the detrimental effects of that kind of med messaging in other places. It happened at the Ohio Board of Pharmacy where threats were made against specific staff members when the Board of Pharmacy there proposed a ban. Uh, it was a negative outcome for us. Now, I get the passion. I get the frustration. And, and when Kratom is saving your life, the last thing you want to be is under a threat that that life-saving plant is going to be stripped from you to legally acquire. But, and so it's hard sometimes to control that frustration, but it, from a public policy perspective, if we understand these people are sincere in their belief, however misinformed it might be, the pathway to move them is to educate them, not to threaten them, not to, to get aggressive with them, 
uh, but to rather educate. And so we encourage all of our advocates. That happened with Senator Huntingford in Washington. Uh, when he filed his ban bill, I immediately reached out, had a great conversation with him. And the next call I got from him was, why are your people threatening me? And he took those threats seriously. And I explained that in a free country and the frustration that people have with that threat of being of not being able to access life-saving plants, that that was the problem. And he understood, but didn't like it. Uh, and it took a lot of time to get him uh, in a position where he was willing then to consider and did in fact file the Kratom Consumer Protection Act. Uh, so I just encourage all of our advocates to understand that restrain yourself from that initial thought of responding to that threat in a way that is uh, meeting fire with fire because the fire is that you're gonna have a ban. We can move these legislators and educate them in most cases if we just take this soft route. And what we don't want is to enrage them to the point that they become, uh, their message becomes more amplified and they tell their colleagues, these people are threatening me and that gives them support. So please uh, let's do our best to be respectful to, to educate people and to understand that these differences of opinion are that, not that they're, they're evil. I don't think our advocates are evil either, the way they've been characterized by some of the people who were the recipients of these uh, over-aggressive messages. And so uh, I think both of, we all are well served if we simply restrain ourselves. The second point that I wanna make is that, that sometimes a loss today uh, will set the stage for success tomorrow. We're seeing in some states that this is a process that's going to take a couple of years. We've seen that in some of the states where we got the Kratom Consumer Protection Act passed. That was true in Oklahoma for certain. It took two years to go through the cycle. Sometimes that's part of the education process. We are going to be in a two-year cycle in Hawaii. Uh, we've got great support over there, but it's because of the timing of the legislature and the fact that Kratom was referred to three different committees in the Hawaii House makes it impossible for us to get a good conclusion there this year but we'll be back in the next session in January of 2023, and I believe we'll be successful. In Oregon, we saw a setback where it took two years to get the bill passed, and then the governor vetoed it last year. Now, the governor is working with us now in the new KCPA, which assigns the regulatory function to the agency that the governor prefers, and she is pledged to sign it when it passes, and we're well on our way there. In Missouri, the, the Missouri House is going to pass the KCPA this afternoon and send it to the Senate. Last year, we blew up, not because of any Kratom issue. We had passed the House with wide margins. I think it was unanimous. And we got to the, the Senate side, had a unanimous referral from the General Laws Committee in the Senate. And it died on the Senate floor because of a, a, a non-related fight over Medicaid reimbursement. And the, 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 the uh, minority party denied the... Uh, the majority a, a, caucus, a quorum, and so they had to adjourn their legislature. In Texas, we saw the same frustrating example, got through on the consent calendar in the Senate after overwhelming passage. Uh, now we're gonna be back next year because Texas doesn't meet this year. So the, it's true in Vermont. We've been working there. We're now teed up for next year to get the Kratom Consumer Protection Act passed, which will withdraw the ban and, and, and replace it with the KCPA. In Rhode Island, we are in the second year of the cycle. We're working hard on that complicated a little by the change in leadership of the Department of Health with a more vociferous anti-Kratom advocate now in the acting uh, director position. But we're working hard there, and I think we'll see success in Rhode Island as we go forward. And, and David's mentioned a number of other states. We are active in every single state that we have the resources to be active in, and we address every hotspot where a ban is proposed, and we fill that gap by giving information and putting resources on the ground to fight it. David and I spend a lot of time on the road talking to legislators. Uh, we do so on your behalf. We want advocates to, to have the best science available for these public policymakers to understand the impact it has on the lives of Kratom consumers. We try to be your voice. And when it's appropriate, we ask you to give your voice personal messages to these legislators where we can be successful. Uh, and so the, as David said, uh, we are successful. And while we have minor setbacks uh, and, and they are frustrating, uh, the overwhelming scientific evidence, the overwhelming public policy, the correct public policy based on science says let's regulate, not ban, uh, I think puts us in a perfect position for ongoing success over the next couple of years. We are grateful for every Kratom advocate who puts forth their financial support, who gives us their voice, 
uh, added support. We know that everyone can't afford to contribute as we as to these efforts, but your voice is important, and it, recruiting others to join us is equally as important. Your family members. Uh, are just as strong an advocate for Kratom, even if they aren't Kratom consumers, because they see the benefits it provides for you. We ask you to continue to support us. When you see us diverting from what you think is the right path, reach out to us because we're open to ideas. We're open to new doors being uh, uh, opened for us in order to reach out to legislators. I am grateful for the many advocates who have, uh, have, have introduced me to legislators with whom they have a personal relationship and that is allowed for very productive discussions. That's the prescription for success as we go forward. And we are, we just finished a call earlier this morning with some of the leading scientists and policymakers in Washington about how we're gonna address the FDA's constant barrage against us and we have a, a plan in place to do that. It's an ongoing effort, but we're with you in every one of these efforts in order to do the one thing that's most important, which is to continue to protect your legal access to Kratom products so that they can enhance your well-being going forward. So thanks to everyone. Uh, again, reach out to the AKA uh, in any way that we can help where we can do it appropriately. We're willing to do so, and we want to be your strong advocate. Thanks to everyone. Thank you.